Good afternoon, everyone. It is Saturday, January the 11th, 2020. It is currently 4.57 p.m. Central Time. Well, I'm sitting here in the sound booth at Victory Baptist Church. Directly in front of me is the microphone, and I have obviously decided to hit the record button. And the reason I've hit the record button is because I want to share with all of you, the listeners, a news article that informs us and describes something that has occurred in the United Kingdom. And I think this is very important for us to understand. It's very important for us to know. You see, as Christians, we have a responsibility to know what is going on in our world. We have a responsibility to pay attention to everything happening in our world. And sometimes Christians have this mindset and this attitude of like, well, I don't care. I don't care what's going on in the world. I'm not going to pay attention. I have other things to pay attention to. I don't care about what's happening in the United Kingdom. I don't care about what's happening there. I don't even care about what's happening in the city in which I live. Many Christians really have this mindset. They either don't care about what's happening in other parts of the world, or they don't really care about what's happening in the world in general. And that way of thinking, sadly, Well, sadly, it needs to be rebuked. Sadly, it needs to be corrected. And sadly, it needs to be removed from Christians. Christians should not think that way. And let me give you two reasons why you should care about what is happening in your world, why you should care about what is going on, why you should care about what is happening and what is going on in your world. And when I say your world, I'm talking everywhere on this planet. You should care. Why should you care as a Christian? Let me give you two reasons. I just want to offer a a gentle rebuke and challenge to this very wrong way of thinking that I sometimes hear Christians say, hey, I don't care about what's happening over there. I don't care about what's going on. And and you'll you'll ask them, hey, did you hear about what happened yesterday? And they'll be like, nope, didn't didn't care, didn't care to hear, didn't hear, don't, don't care. Let's talk about something else. And that always bothers me. So let me offer a gentle rebuke to that, okay? Here we go. Two reasons you should care. Number one, as a Christian, you have a responsibility to be praying about what is happening in your world. You have a responsibility as a Christian to be interceding on behalf of people around the world. You have a responsibility as a Christian. Remember, you go to church to be equipped to do the work of ministry. And one of the key elements of ministry is to pray. You should be praying about what is going on in your world. And you can't pray about what is going on in your world unless you know what is going on in your world. Just think of the news as your prayer list. Christians talk about a prayer list. Just watch the news. That is your prayer list. Intercede. Be a prayer warrior for what is going on in the world. Pray for the people involved in situations. Pray about the situations. Pray about what's going on in society. Pray, pray, pray. You may even want to add prayer and fasting about what's going on in the world. But again, you can't pray about it if you don't know about it. So you need to be informed about what is going on in your world. You need to pay attention. Number two, another reason you need to pay attention to what's going on in your in the world is it gives you information and insight about what's happening within society that should help you know how to speak to the culture in which you live. If you're not paying attention to what's going on, you can't speak you know, in a relevant way to the culture. You really can't be salt. You really can't be light. So many times Christians react, right? Like, they're not paying any attention to what's going on in society. And then ultimately, then soon, all of a sudden, we're like, okay, we need to respond to it. And then we react. And then the society and the culture is looking at us going, you're reacting to that. We moved on. We moved on from that five years ago. Why don't, why don't you as Christians say something that's relevant to the culture? You can't be salt and you can't be light if you don't even know what's going on. So you cannot, you can't even speak to what's going on in a relevant way. And when you do speak to what's going on, you're five years behind. As Christians, we should pay attention to what's happening in our culture. We need to pay, we need to pay attention to what's going on in our culture so that we can pray and two, so that we can know, so that we can speak to it in an authoritative way relevant way. We can see the changes happening in society. We should be the ones who understand the times. 
We should be the ones seeing the trends in society and speaking to them. All right. So I'm going to give you a, a, a news article about something that happened in the United Kingdom. And guess what? You need to know about it and you need to pay attention to it. I'll summarize what occurred. In the United Kingdom, a judge, he ruled that the views of a specific woman are not worthy of respect. This this judge in the United Kingdom has decided this woman's views, your views are not worthy of respect. And not only are they not worthy of respect, it was okay for you to be fired for your views. It was okay for you to be fired for your beliefs because your beliefs are not worthy of respect. Yes, that I, I am not making this up. This happened in the United Kingdom. A judge decided and ruled that a woman's view, her views are not worthy of respect and she could be fired. And guess what her view was? Her view was, and, and this is what she said, that men cannot be women. That's her view. Men cannot be women. And based off that view, the judge said her view is not worthy of respect. Here's the story. It was sent to me on Friday at 2.24 p.m. Uh, they took it from the Christian Post, and I, I appreciate listeners sending me news articles. I always do. It makes my job easy. I just open my email. And there's, all, there's all kinds of news articles. Here we go. Um, and, the, and the Christian Post actually wrote about this on December the 19th, 2019. A woman who was ousted from her job for writing on Twitter that men who identify as transgender are not women. All right, now let's stop right here. We have a woman. She was fired from her job because she was on Twitter and she wrote that men who identify as transgender are not women. Now, we have an obvious question to ask here. What, what Twitter account was this? Did she go on her place of employment's Twitter account and she wrote this on their Twitter account? Okay, yeah, you probably, yeah, you deserve to be fired. I mean, you're, you're, the, your company's Twitter account is not the place for you to, 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 to state your philosophical beliefs and your views and your religious beliefs. So is that why she was fired? Well, well let's find out. So let's go back through this. Here's a woman. She's ousted from her job. She wrote on Twitter that men who identify as transgender are not women. And listen, she has lost her case before an, an employment tribunal that said, here's what they said. This is what this tribunal said. This employment tribunal said that her views are not worthy of respect. Her views are not worthy of respect. Now, this was a highly anticipated ruling. An employment tribunal decided that Maya, M-A-Y-A, Maya Forstater, F-O-R-S-T-A-T-E-R, Maya Forstater, if I am mispronouncing her name, I apologize, Maya Forstater, formerly a senior researcher at the London office of the think tank Center for Global Development, was not fired without just cause. That is what they determined, that she was not fired without just cause, that there was just cause in firing her from her job. And it, it stems from what she wrote on Twitter. Forstater was fired from her job earlier this year for tweeting, listen to this, this is very important, on her personal account. This is her personal account. She's not on her job, her, her, her place of employment's Twitter account. She's on her own Twitter account, All right? So she's on her personal account, and she stated, and this is in quotes, uh, men cannot change into women, end quote. Men cannot change into women. That is her view. That is her belief that if you're a man, you cannot change into a woman, All right? Now, just please note, 
Th- that This is considered controversial in 2020. This is where the culture is going. This is why you need to be paying attention to this. You need to know this is where culture has, this is a change that is developing in culture. They are denying this basic reality that if you are a man, you cannot become a woman. You may dress like one. You may try to alter your body, but at the at your genetic level, you're still going to be a man because that's what you are genetically. But that's controversial now, and stating it on Twitter gets this woman fired. All right. She was also critical of a decision to place a convicted pedophile and rapist who goes by the name Karen White, a biological male, formerly known as Stephen Wood, into a women's only prison because he claimed to identify as female And subsequently, he sexually assaulted a a female inmates, more than one. So here's a man, okay? He's a convicted pedophile and rapist. Um, He's a biological male by the name of Stephen Wood, but now he goes by the name of Karen White. He tells the prison system, hey, I identify as a woman. So he gets put into a women's uh, prison. And guess what? He, He sexually assaulted female inmates. And this woman was critical of that decision. You would think most rational people would be critical of said decision. Judge James Taylor wrote in the 26-page ruling Wednesday, I conclude from the totality of the evidence that Forstater is absolute, absolutist in her view of sex, and it is a core component of her belief that she will refer to a person by the sex she considered appropriate, even if it violates their dignity and or creates an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, and an, offens- an offensive environment. The approach is not worthy of respect in a democratic society. We can stop right here. Now this, now this turns this turns the situation into a little bit more gray. All right. Now, this is this. These are important things for Christians to understand. We live in a culture that's drastically, radically changing around us. Now we're where it's going to become more. It, it seems to be. I should say this. Now we got to be we got to be fair here. All right. Because when you're dealing with situations like this, you want to avoid hyperbole. And you want to avoid exaggeration and you want to strive for for being factual here. It seems, and I will stress seems, I do not have statistical data in front of me to really show how common it is. But it seems, I think that we'll put it this way. It's more talked about now than at other times in history that it's becoming more and more, it appears to be becoming more and more common for certain people to say, hey, I no longer identify as the sex I was born as. I was born as a male. I don't identify as a male. So now I want to be considered and treated as a woman. I want you to call me by pronouns that refer to me as a she, as a her, because I am not a him. Even though I was born a male, I don't feel like a male. I identify as a she. So you're going to treat me that way, identify me that as that way. That is That seems that that's going to become more and more common within society, or it feels that way. And if it's so, every Christian at times are going to be faced with a very difficult decision. What do you do? You're at work. Here's an individual. Yesterday he was Bob. Today he wants to be called Susan and he wants to be addressed as she and her. He wants female pronouns to be addressed. And if you say anything other than that, he will be offended. He will feel like that you're creating a work environment that is hostile, um, that it is, what, what words did they use? Um, that uh, is creating a, 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 a workplace that is violating this person's dignity. It's creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, and offensive environment. Now you're left with a decision. You know Bob is Bob, even though Bob wants to be Susan today. Do you just go along with it? Or do you say, look, that's ridiculous. That's out of my mind. Now, maybe Bob decides, hey, I'm going to start going through the transition. He starts you know, doing all the hormone treatments and all the different things he needs to do. Maybe he even starts surgical procedures, starts dressing as a female. But you still know Bob because you already worked with Bob. What do you do? What do you do? Now, I will argue that in some cases, and I think this, and I always get, Christians get mad at me for this. I think sometimes that's not the battle we need to have. 
The battle is not what I'm going to call you, because what this person needs is not just to be called the correct pronoun. This person obviously needs a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So I got to choose my battle here. But I do, I do think, let's be fair here. I, I, I think we have to be fair here. And, and, and sometimes this gets forgotten in the, um, in the discussion. I understand that many Christians say we need to be charitable. We need to be loving. We need, and I do understand that. But if we just break this down to the most logical, like to, to make this as simple as possible, at the very simplest level, Bob is still a male, all right? And if I refer to him as a male, he may not like it, but it's still the truth. It's still the fact. So can I be fired for stating something that is true and stating something that is a fact? Now, yes, I could be doing it in an intimidating, trying to create hostility in the workplace, and I can understand why uh, someone could get in trouble. So the real issue to this news story, did she get fired for what she did on Twitter or did she get fired because she was walking around at work doing this to people? Well, I don't know. Let me let me read this again. James uh, Taylor wrote in a 26-page ruling, um, I conclude from the totality of the evidence that uh, Forstater is absolutist in her view of sex and it is a core component of her belief that she will refer to a person by the sex she considered appropriate, even if it violates their dignity, creates an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, offensive environment. This approach is not worthy of respect in a democratic society. Now, please note, her view is not worthy of respect. The view of people who believe, hey, if you're a female, but you want to identify as a male, that's worthy of respect, even though it denies reality and denies genetic science. That's worthy of respect. The other person who says, wait, 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 I don't have to go along with that. That's not true. That's not worthy of respect. You see, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. Um, Forstater and many others were stunned at the result. Of course, she was probably stunned at the result. That stating, now this is a very important uh, st- sentence in this article, stating basic biological facts were upheld as legitimate grounds to be fired. So now if you state <laughs> legitimate, let me read that again because I think it's very important. Um, stating basic biological facts were upheld as legitimate grounds to be fired. Now, there's probably a lot to this story. Whenever you have an employment situation where someone is fired, they state, I was fired for this reason. The employer always says, well, it's a combination of this and this and this. So there's probably a little bit more to the story, but it does give me this very weird feeling. Well, wait a minute, man. If I was in the workforce, first, again, I keep telling Christians, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to address these issues in the workforce, especially younger people. And again, there, there, there's, there's, there's a, 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 we have to be loving. We have to be compassionate. And we got to make sure that we don't make, we choose our battles carefully. Wh- which battle do we want to fight? I want to establish the relationship with the person so that at some point in time I can share, I can share the gospel and share the reality of Christ to them and call them to repentance. That's what they need more, first and foremost before they, um, well, we can argue about which gender they are. But I think it's dangerous when you are basically going to say that stating basic biological facts are now a legitimate grounds to be fired. That is a little bit concerning. Now, vo- voicing her support for Forstater was J.K. Rowling. Now, that's very interesting. J.K. Rowling, if you don't know, is the author of the Harry Potter series, which at one point within Christianity, she was deemed, you know, public enemy number one by many Christians because they viewed the uh, Harry Potter series to be, you know, satanic works of deception. But we won't get into all of that. Uh, J.K. Rowling, she tweeted this. Dress however you please. Call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any consenting adult who'll have you. Live your best life in peace and security. But force but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? Hashtag stand with Maya. Hashtag this is not a drill. Now that makes a good point. She's she's not making like dress any way you want. Call what you call yourself whatever you want. You want to call yourself he, she, it, they, call yourself whatever you want. That's okay. Sleep with any consenting adult that'll have you. That's okay. Live your best life in peace and security. 
Like, in other words, do you do whatever you want to do, live your life. But when it turns, you turn around and now you're going to force a woman out of their job for stating that sex is real. In other words, stating that you're born a male, you're born a female, unless, of course, there's a genetic, you know, mutation that occurs, something happens. Okay, we, we understand that. But the normal situation, you're born a male, you're born a female, your genetic makeup t- determines that. And so she's saying, st- stand with this woman, which is kind of interesting that J.K. Rowling would do that. Commenting Thursday on his blog at the American Conservative, author uh, Rod Dreher, I guess is how you say his name, uh, noted that the decision is indicative of political efforts in the United Kingdom. This is exactly what the LGBT activists want here in the United States. People like Maya Forstater, who doesn't appear to be any kind of conservative, but rather a feminist, to be fired and silenced. What is going? What is it going to take to wake people up? This is a totalitarian movement. It, it honest to God, it has colonized minds of the liberal estab- establishment, he said. So it appears this woman is not even a conservative. She's a feminist. And she got fired from her job and the employment tribunal upheld her firing, saying her views are not worthy of respect. What is it going to take people? What is it going to take to get people to wake up? I don't know. I don't know if society is going to wake up. And and well, you know what? I could uh, answer that article. I can tell you uh, what's going to get people um, to wake up. They need to uh, listen. They have to come to a belief that there is truth. And that truth is not relative. There is reality. Reality is not relative. There is a transcendent morality. I believe they need to be brought to faith in Jesus Christ and be converted and and to accept and believe in an eternal God. I think that these are key uh, components. Once, Once the world throws out God, once they throw out a transcendent reality that is outside of us, a transcendent morality that is outside of ourselves, a transcendent truth that is outside of ourselves, guess what you're left with? You're less left with the individual to determine what is right and to determine what is wrong. The individual determines what truth is and what truth isn't. The individual determines what reality is and what reality isn't. And when that occurs, then society begins to, well, begins to take a downward spiral till everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes. That is, the Christian worldview declares that's what would happen. That's what would happen, and it is happening. As Christians, I will say this to conclude. As Christians, you need to decide how you're going to handle these kinds of situations. Now, again, you could decide, I'm going to take a stand, and I'm going to make sure anyone who says that they they want to identify as something, some other sex than they are, I'm, I'm going to make it a point to go to them and call them by, the, by their, their birth pronoun. I'm going to say, no, you are a he, and I'm going to make it an argument, and I'm going to make it a fight, and I'm just going to try to prove a point. Well, you can try to prove a point. You have to ask yourself, what is that a good strategy? Now, remember, you you need to be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You need to be salt. You need to be light. What is your strategy there? Most likely, the person needs salvation more than they need the correct pronoun. So if they tell me, please address me as a she, I probably would go along with it and try to address them as a she. Try to be respectful. Try to show them love. Try to show them compassion. If they ask me what I think about it, I'm going to... Now, if you ask me, hey, what do you think about this? Well, I think you're wrong. I think you were born a... a, a you know, you're born a male. That's what you are. And if you don't identify that way, I'm, I'm greatly... I, I'm sorry that you're not feeling the correct way, but your feelings do not change reality. But my real concern for you is your spiritual condition. Now, if they don't ask me my opinion, I probably would... Then I'm not going to share it. I would try to be respectful, but I would I would do everything I can to build a relationship so that I could share with. I think that's what I would do, but let me make this very clear. Every Christian is going to have to struggle with it. Put it this way. I don't know if we can have a definitive plan. I think we're going to have to approach each situation differently because each situation is going to have its own circumstances that's going to require us to really think about what should I do here? Now, this woman, I, I mean, 
if, if the news article, the way the news article is written, and again, I'd have to go get uh, multiple reports here, and I would challenge you to look this case up and, and find out all the facts. It, it seems like there's two things. The news article is making it sound like she was fired for what she posted on Twitter. Now, if that's the case, then that's just absolutely 100% wrong because now you're going after a person's freedom of expression, freedom of belief. That's thought control, belief control. That's evil and that's wrong. And nobody should be able to tell you what you can post on your Twitter account. Now, they may be able to tell you you cannot post on Twitter wearing the company's uniform or saying anything that would represent the company. I can understand that. But if you're speaking for yourself as yourself on behalf of yourself, and not dragging your, your company into it, you should be able to say what you want because you are an individual. And I, of course, here in the United States of America, we should continue to believe and defend freedom of speech. And that means we defend speech of people who say horrible things about Christianity, horrible things about Jesus, because we want to defend their freedom because we want to protect our freedom. Now, if she was fired, because, again, the news article states the Twitter thing, but the judge and what they they cited the judge, he doesn't mention Twitter. He mentions that she's an absolutist and her view on sex. And this is going to it sounds like he's saying it's going to lead. It, I, you know, maybe he's referring to that it already had that she's going around at her place of employment saying, hey, 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 no, 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 you're not a female. You're a he. Now, again, I don't know. I, I don't know what the circumstances are. Now, if she's in a situation, they come to you and go, hey, you remember yesterday Bob was Bob? Well, today Bob is Susan. You need to address them as, as she, you need to address Bob as she because she is a she today, right? And you've got to use those pronouns. I, I can understand that maybe like, well, I, I have to? You do realize that's denying biological reality, right? He's still a male or she's a male or whatever. Susan is actually a, a male, I have to do this? You know, that... Yeah, I would have a hard time with that. But at the same time, I can understand from a Christian going, okay, I'm just going to go along with this and I'm not going to fight this. We've got to choose our... We've got to choose our battles carefully. Now, I know this is way over there in the United Kingdom and we may think it's never coming here, but just continue to watch. Just continue to watch. Society is, is definitely headed down this path. And it's a path we have to consider. All right, there's a lot more thoughts I would like to share on this, but I wanted to just bring this to your attention. Pray for this woman. Pray for the United Kingdom. Pray for our society that that somebody would say, hey, time out here, time out. We can't just create a new reality. You're born, your genetic makeup says you're a male or a female. And if you're born as a male and a female, and of course there's not some kind of, you know, circumstance where you, you know, there are people born with, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the sexual organs of both male and female. We've got people, there's lots of things that can happen uh, born. These things can occur. And we, we obviously nobody is, is nobody should be speaking absolute, no situations. You've got to take those situations and be sympathetic because that's a, that's a lot of, a lot of different, you know, birth things that can happen in birth where people are born with a lot of different things going on that makes the situation complicated. But that is a very, 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 very small percentage. If we're talking about a person that was clearly born a male, there's no problem. They were born a male. Their their anatomy says they're a male. Their their, uh, genetic makeup says they're a male. There's no argument. Well, then if I say that you're a male, I don't know why I should get in trouble because that's what you literally are, even though you want to pretend that you're not. And it's like, you know, so can I come to work and say, don't refer to, I mean, you know, I I now identify as this and you're going, I mean, how far do you take it? At some point, we're going to have to get back to reality is reality. Facts are facts. And we have to live in accordance with those facts and reality, even if we don't like them, even if we are offended by reality. You're, you're, you being offended by reality doesn't mean reality should be changed to get rid of you being offended. You've got to get over yourself and and face reality. All right, we'll stop right there. A lot more could be said, but a crazy story. And, uh, well, we'll talk about it more later. You can email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Uh, I'll stop right there. And, uh, well, everyone have a great day. God bless. <laughs>